Welcome to Living Faith Ministries. So guys, so excited for you guys to be here. Thank you so much for tuning on our YouTube channel. Come on, I always say this, the best is yet to come. Why is that? Because we serve such an amazing God. And so today I want to talk about where is, where are you, God? Where are you? That's what I want to talk about. Because I know there's many times we go through life and we're sitting there and we're like, where are you, God? Let's pray. (sighs) Father God, I thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord that you're always there for us, even when we don't feel you. I pray today's message that you will anoint me. I pray that many lives will be radically changed. I pray, Lord, that hope will, will be restored. I pray, God, that when people are out there and they feel like giving up, that you will give me the right words to, to be able to activate hope back into their life. I pray, Lord, that this sermon will change the minds and that there'll be a confidence knowing that you are there for us. May the words that come out of my mouth not be of me, but of you. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Have you ever felt like God was so distant in your life? Maybe you felt like you did something that God could never forgive you. Maybe you feel God doesn't love you. Maybe you feel like God left you. Have you ever felt that before? Because I know I have. But I want to remind you and to tell you that God has never left you nor forsake you. You know what? You might be going through a through some situations that you feel like God has left you, when the truth is, is that we actually push away God, but he has always been there right by our side, saying, I'm I'm never gonna leave you, I'm here for you. His arms are wide open, saying, just call on me and I'll be there for you. He's so loving, he's so graceful. I want to remind you that we serve a God who wants the best for us. He wants the best for us. You know, can you imagine your parents that want the best for you and they have this motive telling you, I want the best for you, so I'm going to pay for the best school for you. And you might be wondering sitting there why I wonder why they would say that and you know if you're from an Asian family they always want the best education that's like just a straight up Asian thing and um, if you can imagine saying them saying you know what I want to take you to the best school out there to get you the highest education so that when you get your education and I'm ready to retire you're gonna sit back and take care of me I'm going to be the one who's prospering. I'm just investing right now. (laughs) Or maybe your parents are saying, you know what? I want to take you to to the best education because I don't want to raise any, I don't want to raise any stupid kids. (laughs) But the truth and the matter is none of those are really true. Most of the time, your parents want to see you exceed because they love you. They just want the best for you. No motive behind that. And you know, that's how God is. God just wants to see the best for your life. There's no motive. He just does it because he loves you so, so much. You know, sometimes we go through things and we just don't understand. We can't understand why we're going through those things. But you know what? Many times God has everything ordained. He already has everything set in motion and nothing is a surprise for him. No matter what the situation is, God is just waiting for you. When we feel weak, God is there to strengthen us. 
to remove the guilt, the shame, the wrongdoing, the re and replace it with healing, restoration, and peace. Come on, because I know this is a season, especially during the holiday seasons as we enter into, that a lot of thoughts creep up. A lot of thoughts, negative thoughts. This is the season where the highest su suicide rate comes about. But I want to remind you, God has never left you nor forsaken you. And as we come into this season that we're entering into, I get all this stuff happens. Family members are, are away. Deaths have passed. You know, people have been out of our lives. People have um, aren't in our lives anymore. Uh, there's a lot going on. And the holiday season tends to bring a, a reminder of those precious moments. And so as we're walking and as we're getting into this season, I want to remind us that God has never left you nor forsaken you. That even when people come out of your life, that doesn't change God. Even when you yourself have done some really crazy, horrible things that you even feel like God can never forgive you, He is there for you. That's a lie of the enemy trying to push you away from God, saying that God, God can never forgive you because He, he w has always forgiven you. He just wants you. And you, you know, in life, we cannot do it in our, our own strength. And it is God's desire to renew our strength. For Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is God is saying his, his hope, your hope is in, in the Lord. He, once you put your, your faith, once you, once, once you just say, God, you know what? I know you're there. I know you got my back. Come on. God is just going to move on behalf of you. He's going to move on behalf of your situation. He's going to move on behalf of what's inside of you, what has pushed you down, all that depression, all that anxiety. He's going to renew your, your strength. He's going to renew what's inside of you, the healing that needs to take place, the restoration that needs to pl take place. He is a God of hope that can do all things, but we cannot do those things on our own. The moment we put our hope in Jesus is a moment he can renew our strength. And when he renews our strength, we will soar like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. Come on. I think that's so powerful. And we will walk and not be faint. That's what it looks like to put our strength in the Lord. But when we don't put our strength in the Lord, let me tell you, that's what we look like. The things that we need, <laughs> that we feel weak, that we feel like we can barely move, that we, all we're doing is just slumbering and we feel weary and we, and we just barely move and we just feel very faint. That's what it looks like when we don't put our hope in the Lord. But immediately, things shift the moment when we put our hope in the Lord. Everything shifts. Everything. And that's so powerful. So when we place our hope in the Lord... He will renew our strength. No matter how deep of a mess we're in, no matter how much you feel like you, you're giving up, you feel hopeless and you feel like you can't move, you feel weak, you feel like there's, there's nothing ahead for you. But if we focus on God, if we focus on Jesus, he will give us the power to overcome no matter what you're going through, he can renew your strength. He can restore your hope because nothing is impossible for him. Nothing. No matter what the situation is, God can turn it around. No matter what it is. See, we see the story of Joseph he had 12 brothers 
and only one one was from the same mother which was Benjamin Joseph the other brothers did not like Joseph because they all saw that they found favor amongst their dad they're like Joseph dad loves Joseph more than us they did not like it not at all and the reason why it just stemmed off not only did he get treated differently but ooh, when he got the coat the long coat with many colors you know what that resembled that resembled anyone who was wearing a coat with many colors that was long sleeved resembled they did not have to work <laughs> i would be mad too are you kidding me my brother, my sister over there, all he's doing is just chilling with that nice fancy coat. You know I want that Gucci, but here I am. I'm, all, I'm laboring in my Walmart clothes. Oh, hell no. <laughs> this is not right. I want that Gucci. I want that Louis Vuitton. I, I want that Prada. Uh-uh, this is not right. You know, I, I, might, I think I might be a little bit mad. And so... Here are the brothers. They're mad. They're mad. This is not fair. How can our dad treat us differently than him? And jealousy begins to stir up inside of them. Just pure jealousy. Things are heated. Not only that, but not is he only favorable amongst his dad but then joseph gets his dream that says hey hey bros you're gonna all bow down to me ha <laughs> i'm wearing my gucci i'm wearing my prada i'm wearing my louis and guess what you're gonna bow down to me that's the dream that god told me bring it up to god you know you can't get angry with me and that just tipped it over oh the brothers were so mad they were like, oh, hell no. He gets everything he wants. He, he gets his fine coat. He gets a colorful coat. He gets favored from, from um, his, our father. And then even the heavenly father says, we're going to bow down to him. I'm done. I'm done. I can't take this no more. I'm not going to take this no more. And so they're so upset that they are scheming of killing Joseph they're like I don't want let's let's just let's do what we can let's get him out of this family they throw him in a well and then one of the brothers say let's not kill him let's just sell him to the slaves and here here they're like all right that's cool he got his coat let's let's make some profit let's make some dough off of him too we'll sell him and get some dough right so it's even now it's fair and so the brothers reject Joseph and they have this scheme. And you know what? I'm pretty sure after that was all said and done, they felt pretty damn guilty about what they did. But you know what? The rejection of Joseph was actually all in the plan of God. Whether we're, we can relate to Joseph's side or we can relate to the brother's side, nothing that we can do will change the way God loves us, the way God is always near and he hasn't given up on us. Let me just clarify this. Even when we backstab, even when we have murdered, even when we've done some really horrible things, nothing can change the way God loves you. Nothing. Joseph, on his side, at the time could have said, where are you, God? You gave me all these dreams. What's going on? Joseph didn't know that the betrayal was a part of God's original plan. What looked like a bad situation, an unforgivable situation, God still had a plan for it. 
God can use any situation and turn it around for his glory. No matter what your situation looks like, there is nothing you can do to change the way God loves you and he has forgiven you. All you have to do is say, God, please forgive me. And no matter what it is, God will forgive. And you might think, no, he would never forgive a murderer. He would never forgive someone who threw their brother in and caused them to be in slavery. But you know what? God's love is shown all throughout the Bible. We can look at the prime example of Cain, who was the first murderer in the Bible. And Cain, God protected Cain. Cain was jealous of his brother. Cain was jealous. Who jealousy is a dangerous emotion. Let's stop there. That's a very dangerous emotion. Jealousy can cause someone to kill. And Cain was actually the first murderer in the Bible because of the root of jealousy. And because of that, Cain was cursed by God. But even though Cain was cursed, and he said, God, this is too much for me to bear, God's grace, God's love was over him and marked a a protection over Cain that said, if anyone ever touched you, they would suffer vengeance seven times times over. Cain did not deserve that. He just killed his brother because his motive was jealous. But God's grace said, I I still love you. I still am going to cover you. I'm still going to protect you. I didn't like what happened, but my love never changed. My love for you never changed. So I want to say, if you're in a situation and you feel like, God, I've done some really bad stuff. I don't think you could ever love me. No, that's the lie of the enemy. God still loves you. He loves you so much. You know, God sent his one and only son to die on the cross because he loved us. And God used Judas to put him on the cross. Judas' purpose was to kill Jesus. And I believe Jesus, and even though he killed Jesus, I still believed Judas went to heaven because he repented. He repented by having so much guilt that he even hung himself himself on the tree because he felt horrible for what he did to Jesus. And I believe even with that, God already knew, God already orchestrated everything. And he used Judas so that we can all receive eternal salvation the moment we accept Jesus into our hearts. I mean, can you imagine how big, how loving our God is that even when someone murdered their own son would say, I still forgive you. Wow. That's some deep love. That's some deep love. See, there is nothing that can turn you away from God. He loves you so much. He already knew you wouldn't be able to do things on your own. That's why he gave us salvation and made it easy for us to receive salvation by just saying, Jesus, I accept you into my own. I accept you into my heart. Just that simple. You know, sometimes we don't see it. 
Joseph was in the house of Pharaoh. Sometimes we don't see if God was there. But we see Joseph was in the house of Pharaoh and he saw his brothers. When he saw his brothers and the brothers saw him, the brothers did not recognize him at first. Sometimes we can't recognize when God is around us, even though he's there and he's never left us. It was until the second time they saw Joseph and Joseph invited them for dinner and told them to bring their youngest brother, Benjamin. And when Joseph revealed who he was to his brothers, that is when the brothers were able to recognize who he was. It's kind of like the second coming when Jesus will be recognized amongst the Jews. God is always there, even when we don't feel like he is. We're just not recognizing it. God is not done trying to reveal who he is. He is always there trying to show you he is here for you, taking care of you. But sometimes we're missing it. We focus too much on our problems, on our situations, on our circumstances. And we feel so distant, even though God is right there. Again, he has never left you nor forsaken you. You know, the brothers were afraid when they realized it was Joseph for what, because they knew what they did to him. And they were probably thinking, oh, Joseph is in high power now. He's going to chop our heads off. He has the authority to do it and has every right to do it. <laughs> he has every right. But you know what? Joseph had already forgiven them. And he responded, this is where God wanted him to save the land and the, and the people from starvation. He explained the purpose. The purpose was for God for him to be used by God to preserve the life of everyone because the famine was coming. So he didn't focus on the acts of his brother, but he focused. He focused on the purpose, how God changed that situation around and used it for his glory. See, no matter what we, what we did, what we do, Jesus has already forgiven us. He already, gave, he already knew we were going to mess up. Let's just clarify that. He already knew that. He's just waiting for us to recognize him so he can show you that you are already forgiven and his love never left you. Just as Joseph already forgave his brothers and still loved and still loved them you know in the midst Joseph gave his younger brother Benjamin five times more food and clothes than the other brothers see Joseph and Benjamin both came from the same mother Rachel and the other ten were from the mother of Leah and when I look this up, Rachel means lamb. And the lamb resembles the grace of God. And Leah resembles the mother of the law. Just like Sarah stood for the mother of grace, and Haggai stood for the mother of the law. I feel like many times the church nowadays resembles too much of the mother of the law rather than the mother of grace. See, here's the thing. We all come from the same father, but it's our choice. Do we want to be under the law and be under that, or do we want to be under the law or under the grace? 
because Benjamin was under the mother of grace. And through that, he received five more times than the other brothers. Because grace doesn't give us what we deserve. Grace just gives. Just gives. And the law, you have to earn it. You have to meet to this expectation. You have to pay for the price if you don't, if you don't meet that expectation. But who do you want to be under? The law or under grace? And because Benjamin was under grace, he received more. When we are under grace, there's more for you. We don't deserve it. But thank God for Jesus, who died on the cross for our salvation so that we can also receive grace. For Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. Not by works. Works meaning if you don't match up to the law, he doesn't, it doesn't say that not by your works so that you can boast. But it is just a gift. Just a gift that God gave you. And you receive that by faith. Just as simple. When we accept Jesus, we are covered in his grace. When we're covered in his grace, more is for us. We don't deserve it, but God doesn't care. He just cares for you. It's just like the prodigal son. The son took his inheritance and said, Woo! it's time to party and he went out he went to the clubs he went to he went to to the women he he went to to whatever the the drugs he went out whatever he wanted he just wanted to enjoy life and he didn't care because he got all this money he was like whoo ecstatic and he enjoyed it and then he was like shoot I wasn't wise with my money. I didn't invest. I just went out to party. Didn't have any money. Was starving, eating with the pigs. Got this idea. What if I become a servant to my dad? At least my dad served, you know, food to the servants. That's better than eating with the pigs. So he thinks this is a great idea. So he's coming home. And from a far distance, his, his father looks and says, what, is that my son? Oh my God, that's my son. Come on, everyone, let's throw a party. He's coming home. Let's, let's get the fattest pig out there. Let's get the best of the best food, uh, the caviar, the steak. Let's, let's get the, all of that. Let's prepare it because my son is coming home. And when he comes and sees his father, all the father does is just embrace him. He just embraces him. He doesn't sit there and say, what did you do with all the money? Did you spend it on hookers and drugs and alcohol? He, he could have said that. He could have scolded his son, you know, it's like, that's all the money you got. You spend all your inheritance. You asked for it too early and you were stupid. <laughs> but here's the thing. He didn't say that. He was just so happy his son was home. That's all he cared about. He didn't care about his past. He was just so happy to see him back. That he just embraced him and threw a party. And you know what? That's how Jesus is with us. That is how he is with us. He understands we're going to mess up. He understands we're going to have faults. But he embraces us. 
when we say, I'm coming home. I just, I can't do this. I can't do this without you. And he just cares for us. We just see that Jesus cares for us. Not what he, not what we have done, but he just cares for us. Can I say God is not concerned about how messed up we are? Because he will give us beauty for our ashes. For in Isaiah 61, 3, it says to counsel those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. He turns our beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness so that we may be called trees of righteousness. We can't take on the burdens of life. Jesus knew that and knew we would mess up. Jesus wanted to get to take that burden. For in Proverbs 17:22 it says a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. The medicine Jesus gave us is his joy. He turns our sadness into joy. The joy of the Lord will renew our strength. See, when we focus on Jesus, God will deliver us. All he cares about is that we focus on him. Genesis 45, 8 through 11, it says, So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen. You shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come, and all that you have come to poverty, for there are still five years of famine. You know, this is where Joseph tells his brothers, go and tell your father, come, bring the whole family, bring the whole crew to Goshen. Goshen. And I looked online and it said, Goshen, it says first, and here it says, to come near him. And Goshen was a land of comfort and plenty. This was a city that they were going to be taken care of. Come near, come near closer to me. And here's the thing, when we come near Christ, we reap the comfort and plenty. The place near Christ gives us five more times. When we come to Christ, we enter into his grace. We don't deserve it, but nothing will change how he thinks about us. Nothing, nothing, how he loves us, and how he wants to be so close. Nothing will change. It is near him that we reap the blessing. Just know he loves you so much that he took that cross to deliver you from pain so you can walk in victory, so you can walk in peace, so you can walk in restoration so you can walk in strength, so that you can walk in healing. He did it because he loves you.
He doesn't say, I love you if you do this. He just says, I love you. I love you. Just accept my love. Come close to me. Let me take care of you. His love is so profound. It blows my mind all the time that he's so loving and so forgiving. Understand if you're living in guilt, if you're living in shame, if you're living in a, in a situation that you feel like is impossible, that God can never forgive you, I want to remind you today, he can, and he does, and he loves you, and that never changed. That never changed. So where are you, God, is the title of the sermon. And where he is, is he's always been there for you. Sometimes we walk away, but he's never left. If you're in a place right now and you say, I'm ready, I can't handle, I cannot handle the pain that I'm going through, the guilt, the shame, the circumstance, I can't handle it. Maybe you're in a place where you walked away or you're in a place that you never even received Christ into your heart. And you're like, I can't do this anymore on my own strength. I've been trying. I've been trying with the meds. I've been trying with, with, the, with the drugs, with the alcohol, with everything I can on my own strength. And each one has failed me. This might be the time to try something new. The one that can heal you. The one that can deliver you the one that can restore you. This is the perfect time to say, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to accept Jesus into my heart. If that is you, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. I accept you into my heart and I declare heaven is my home and God is my father in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, you guys. I hope this word was a blessing. Know that Jesus never gave up on you. Take care and God bless.